Hello my soccer universe. Spain teams do what Spain teams do. They win finals and so Spain are your new European champions as well. And of course we had to know it. It's an Adidas team. And Adidas team also usually win finals. Only in 92 did an Adidas team lose a Euro final. And that's on the back of two finals that didn't feature any Adidas team. So just have that in mind. Next time you see an Adidas team in the final, they're gonna win this most likely. And Spain, we cannot argue with that one. They have been the best team, not only of the tournament, they also have been the better team on the night and they did it the hard way. They literally have beaten every big nation in Europe that is out there. They have beaten the two finalists from the last Euros. They have beaten the second and the third place teams from the last World Cup. They have beaten the hosts who many claim have been the second best team in the tournament already in the quarters. You really cannot argue with this triumph and it's a young, exciting team. They played consistently great. They have a verticality that Spain have been lacking for a long time. I would argue since 2010, except for the 2012 final in 2008, they had this verticality as well. A really, really exciting team to watch and I think there's more to come from them. And what makes it even more exciting is that it does not rely on the big clubs, Barcelona, Real Madrid, there were hardly any players from these clubs there. Yes, we had Carvajal, we had Lamin Yamal, Nacho came on. It was, and I might be overplaying it, but it was a triumph made in the Basque country. This to me is exciting. We had in this final four Real Sociedad players playing not all at the same time, but there were always at least three Real Sociedad players in there. There was also the goalie from Athletic Club, Nico Williams also from Athletic Club. Laporte came through Athletic Club and I'm sure I'm missing someone there as well. So I find this the biggest story to me, that this is made in the Basque country, but also that other players from the squad came from other clubs as well and mostly smaller clubs too. This makes this Spain team really, really exciting. And I also think this speaks a whole lot for Luis de la Fuente, who was not liked as an appointment after Luis Enrique was fired. But you know, his under 21 record is pretty spotless. And now he has won two titles in two years. No one thought about the Nations League all that much. I still say the Nations League will eventually become the bigger competition. And now he won the Euros and convincingly so. Absolutely convincingly so. And then for England, I think this is a big chance miss. I mean, you lose a second consecutive final and yes, let's take a step back prior to Southgate, before we do all the Southgate bashing that many uh, want to do. Prior to Southgate, England have not reached a final since 1966. They have not reached two finals. They have reached a semi-final at the World Cup and they are also a quarter-final at the World Cup. So Southgate's record is pretty good. However, especially this time around, his football is way too timid, way too timid with the talent that he has. I mean, people watch the Premier League because they want to see exciting front foot football. They didn't get it with Southgate. And in a way, I was happy that the more attacking side won to not reward this timid play. On the other side, I also have to say, and I was literally neutral in the final. When the goals, I didn't feel any emotion either side. I felt that Spain is the better team. But when I think about Southgate and Kane, I feel want these guys to win something with England. I really do. I think these players would deserve some silverware to come with what they have achieved. However, don't do it this way. I mean, I had resigned myself already at the last Euros and then Italy won and needless to say, as an Italy fan, I was overly pleased. I didn't feel any of these emotions now. I just felt that the better team won and I think no one can deny that. Before we look in the final, I quickly want to talk about the closing ceremony as well. You know, I'm not a big fan of this, although this, this one was actually quite colorful. I found it cool what they did with the arms in blue on the white shirts and, you know, then having Euro 2024 and all that kind of stuff. That was really cool stuff. Uh, the music acts, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I like the fireworks. I really love these colorful fireworks that UEFA put up there. I remember at the opening ceremony of the previous Euros at the Olympico in Rome and now at the Olympia Stadium in Berlin. This looks actually quite cool. The best thing is it was short. And this is what UEFA actually do get right to make it not too long and drawn out. It's a quick thing. And let's get on with the game. The game though, I have to say, wow, the turgid slow half. It was really almost nothing happening. It was like England forced Spain to go down to their level. No, England actually 
knew that they have to defend well and there is a place to being defensive especially if you have such an offensive power uh, England have all the talent going up front as well but creative a grace too they really defended well I think there was one attack where Nico Williams finally broke through and then got blocked so beautifully by Stones. This was a great defensive action. I think the most notable thing of the first half was actually the two yellow cards that were given out. And he would have made a lot of money with this. Kane and Olmo. That was not in the cards, I have to say. I think the first real semi chance came in the around the 15th minute i think when leonard moore tried an overhead kick england then had a few tentative shots i think the most dangerous things was a back pass by stones to pickford that yeah he could control easily but you know there was some speed to that one that might have been uncomfortable and i think there was a free kick late where i think Foden just gets his foot on but he's falling back that could be a little bit more dangerous probably the most crucial thing was that there was a cane shot blocked and that rotary then launches into laporte seemingly laporte is injured but in the end, it was Rotary that got injured. Rotary had to be taken off at the halftime. And I was thinking, boy, is that an advantage for England? Because Rotary wins football games. Rodri is the center of the Spanish midfield. Well, I was proven wrong very, very quickly because Spain actually came out to play at the Cavacal gets the ball, put it to Lamin Diamal, who runs across from the left, sees Nico Williams, and he makes it 1-0. The English defense uncharacteristically unsorted there. And I was so happy. We had the early goal that probably would have helped already in the first half. But now we had a game. And Spain were out there to put more pressure on England. There were chances by Morata, who got past his defender. But the shot was then easily saved by Pickford. There was another one by Olmo that he drags wide. I think the Olmo chance came before. There was a time I thought, yeah, Spain is going to kill this off now rather, rather quickly. But they didn't. And Southgate then also reacted. And he brought on Watkins for Kane at the hour mark. Did not really quite work. Then Morata also had to come off. Oyar Sabal crucially came on and then he brings on Cole Palmer and a little bit later it's actually an attack where Spain is pushing forward Kukorea actually leaving the space so Saka has some space to run plays it to Bellingham in the box who passes it back to Palmer who takes a long range shot that takes the slightest of deflections and it goes into the net and England are back in the game and then just for a little bit of time you thought that England have the upper hand and Spain seems rattled and England probably should have struck there they win these Euros however then Spain wrestled back control and the resourcefulness of the Spain team is amazing you know you didn't even feel that Rodri was missing Subimendi did a job there this is what Spain can do and this is why they deserve to be a champion here they had a chance through Yamal and then it was a brilliant passing play where Olmo finds Oyar Sabal plays it outside to Kukorea as I said who was at fault for the England equalizer who puts in a wonderful cross and just by the slimmest of margins I think the knee of Stones was ahead of Oyar Sabal Oyar Sabal puts it into the net and makes it 2-1 Oyar Sabal scores the winner. A substitute playing for Real Sociedad, not one of the big stars. It's very characteristic of these Euros. Maybe the only thing I would have missed was probably an own goal, but you know. Other than that, it was a very characteristic goal for these Euros that it's a non-star player. I like Oyar Sabal. I think he's great for Real Sociedad. But that he scores the winner, that was really, really cool. However, it was not quite done yet. I mean, this was the 86th minute and England had to come out. And England had the big chance to equalize. A triple chance, in fact. There was a Palmer corner that a Rice header is saved by Una Simon right on the head of Gehi and almost saves it off the line, which probably was the best action of the entire tournament. I include the goal that he was given to him against France with the brilliant action he had. But that was worth way more. And then the ball falls back to Rice, who then again heads it over the bar. That was the chance. I haven't mentioned the referee and I didn't need to mention him at all. Great control of the game. Every card that he gave, it was all right. I think there was no controversy surrounding him. Great appointment by UEFA. Maybe the one small controversy. He puts four minutes stoppage time up and he ends it right at four minutes. But there were multiple stoppages going on. That I didn't quite understand. Why do you whistle it that exactly for? Because I even said to my daughters, you know, this is going to take two more minutes. And, you know, my little one was definitely more for Spain. And I was wrong. But, you know, 
this is very very small complaint a very small complaint because in the end i think we got the right result overall i have to say spain fully deserving i love the trophy ceremony how the king was very cordial with the players i actually found this rather refreshing he did not need to hold the trophy i mean he has done literally nothing to deserve holding the trophy but other than that i think the spanish players really enjoyed themselves and they are now the european kings and i have to mention it spain have now won four euros they're the record champions that was never in the car when i started night spain had a single one from the beginnings of the euros germany had three well that turned around rather quickly and i really thought it will be france that will get a third one no not gonna be it is spain spain are the kings of europe as they displayed on their shorts very quick thoughts on the tournament i will do a more dedicated tournament review later this week i said already the worthy winner the only real highlight team this most solid team has won it of an overall i would say average euros it was great to see a euros in germany where the fans can come from everywhere germany is very well located to host the euros probably even better than france even better than the uk germany is almost a perfect location even better than italy for instance and i think it showed to have that this gave us kind of old time vibes again after having a few tournaments that were rather weird you know russia probably was just about okay but then we had the COVID uh, Euros, which I honestly didn't mind to have it a little bit all over Europe, but you couldn't travel. Then you had the Qatar World Cup, which was great on the pitch, not necessarily off the pitch. This one actually felt quite well. You had multiple fans. There were very little negative events to report from the part of the fans. And I think that made for a great Euros in that sense, if it was not on the pitch. I really felt that it was not a Euros for the superstars. I mean, the top goal scorer was own goal and we had six official top scorers with three goals each. Goal scoring was down. There's definitely something to look at, but at least a positive team won. And I think that is good overall. Any case, those were my thoughts on the final, a little bit on the Euros in general. I will give you probably tomorrow, if not on Wednesday, a quick recap on the Euros. I probably want to do a montage as well, but let's see if I will get to that. In any case, give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, let me know your thoughts on the final, on the winners. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!